Met her mother in 1980 in Columbus, Indiana. Okay. And we had Amber. Uh -huh. And we moved to Dallas. And from there, our relationship was strained from the beginning because she didn't really want Amber. And we got married, stayed married for three years. And a month after I was left, her boyfriend had moved in with her. Uh -huh. And a month later, they tell me Amber's missing. Okay. Where was you at when uh, Amber came up missing? I was at my grandparents in Carrollton, Kentucky. In Kentucky. Uh, how did you become aware that she was missing? Uh, the FBI on uh, December 26th uh, knocked on my grandparents' door mm -hmm. and uh, told me that, 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 asked me where Amber was at. And I told them in Texas with her mother, and they said, no, she wasn't. And they said that. Her, Stephanie's boyfriend, James Brett Monroe, had taken her to McDonald's Grocery that morning, which is the day after Christmas, and she was stolen out of his pickup truck, which at this point we all know is probably not true. So that's how this all started. Day four. The team had just gotten back to the hotel from being interviewed and everybody had been up for nearly 24 hours and we were all exhausted. We were told by the investigators that the bones we found would be examined and the process would be expedited and we would learn the results of what would be discovered the night before within 24 hours. While most people were just waking up and getting breakfast, most of us were ready for sleep. While most were asleep, Steve would learn the results of what we found on day three, just six hours later. The results, three bones that were supposedly recovered came back as one belonging to a small dog, another bone belonging to a bird, and the third bone was unknown but came back as non-human. This was very disheartening. We would also learn from Carolyn, who went under the house with the two members of law enforcement, that although there were several different bones discovered under the house, they only recovered three bones that we know of. According to Carolyn, they never went all the way back under the house where the site of the hole was. They were worried about a live wire running under the house. It would not go all the way back so this was very upsetting to hear. There was clearly more items to recover and to test, but they said it wasn't safe to go all the way back in. So later on day four, we had regrouped in the evening to come up with another game plan. Since they cleared the items they recovered, that meant law enforcement was not coming back to search under the house, which meant we had one more day to collect as much as we could to find out what was actually in that hole. Day five. We decided we were going to collect as much samples as possible, so we needed more gear for collecting samples. So we went shopping for plastic containers, labels, paper bags, and other various items. Afterwards, we would meet up at the house and the plan was for Carolyn and Larry to crawl back under to the side of the hole start taking soil samples from the depression and from the mound.
coming. I'm just shining the light to see if I see anything. This process went pretty smooth as Larry and Carolyn would collect samples and they would send them out in special containers while documenting everything like day, time, signature, and we would organize them. During the later part of the day, they would discover new artifacts that we had never seen before. The first, the first layer, the second layer, contaminated. Yeah, yeah. And by the time you get the third on, you yeah. don't even. Yeah, so four? Three to four. Three to four. Uh, I used to wear five when I was working crime scene. Oh, yeah, so that you don't want to take off a couple oh, no, and go back. Special. Since these new items have not been identified, we cannot reveal exactly what these new artifacts are, but they were found in the depression. Although we would soon be leaving back home, we weren't going home empty handed, and the artifacts we collected would be brought back with Steve, and they would be sorted through and eventually be sent to a lab. This process will take time. While we wait for the results on these artifacts, we are making arrangements for GPR, ground penetrating radar, and cadaver dogs to go over the anomalies we discovered in the backyard. If needed, we will go back to that house in Texas to collect any more samples. But right now we are just waiting for the results. We would like to thank the homeowners for being great hosts. Also I'd like to thank all our viewers for watching and of course a special thanks to all those who donated their funds to help support this mission. No matter what happens, I believe this was a successful trip and we discovered things that we couldn't have ever imagined and feel like we may be closer to uncovering the secrets that have been buried for nearly 40 years. There are many other cold cases and families that need help and if you would like to support this channel and Steve's channel, the links are in the description. We will release more details when the time is appropriate. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new to the channel.